Facebook. Uh, Terrence Jeffrey is <laughs> editor at large at Human Events, and he's a, com a columnist with Creator Syndicate. Uh, he serves as a research director for Pat Buchanan in his 1992 presidential campaign, and afterwards became the executive director of the American Cause. Uh, in 1996, uh, Jeffrey rejoined Buchanan's team, working as his campaign manager for his second presidential bid. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey uh, was born in San Francisco. He's a graduate of Princeton University. Uh, between 1987 and 91, he was an editorial writer in the Washington, the Washington Times, where he's nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. So please help me welcome Terry Jeffrey. Thank you very much, Richard. Thanks for having me here. I want to say I agree with virtually everything Richard just said. Um, Today, when I was going through my library, I found this book, which was literally bequeathed to me by my dad, who was a Robert Taft conservative. It's The Political Principles of Robert Taft by Russell Kirk and James McClellan. I regret to say I haven't read the book yet, but uh, it's got some very uh, interesting chapter heads that, uh, like a, a foreign policy for Americans is the final chapter. This book. My dad saved all these kind of things. Was distributed by the Conservative Book Club in 1967. Yeah, sure. There you go. David might have written yeah, it. Worked yeah, with yeah. Him. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Anyway, 1967, the Conservative Book Club was putting out this book. But uh, um, when I was a kid growing up, and this is apropos of Richard's point that uh, once upon a time the Conservative movement <coughs> didn't have this media that we have now, with uh, all these various publications, talk radio shows internet sites, uh, or, you know, grassroots organizations, 501c3s, that are trying to keep the, the establishment media honest and get our message out. And uh, we certainly didn't control most of the schools and not the major universities. I remember when I was a kid, my dad told me, there's two things you need to know that they're never going to teach you in school. And one of those is that FDR was a socialist. <laughs> <laughs> and usually my dad, even though my dad was a preacher's kid, he usually prefaced that with he was a goddamn socialist. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think was okay for my dad, because I think he meant it literally. I don't think it was the, <laughs> the other thing that uh, uh, my dad used to tell me is that Joe McCarthy was right. And uh, there was a lot of basically Senator McCarthy for the rest of history until Stan Evans' book comes out later this fall, which you're all going to have to read. But uh, those go to two of the pillars that Richard was talking about. FDR was a socialist. Uh, he did, in fact, uh, socialize retirement, for example, for the American people. We now have to go on Social Security. We pay effectively 15 percent of everything we earn into the socialist government entitlement program that we're all supposed to grow old into. The government take care of us and control our lives, and eventually probably euthanize us down the road. Um, the other that was you know the limited government free market pillar of conservatism was opposed to the socialism of FDR. And in recent years, the Republican Party has become a socialist party, most especially with George Bush's signature domestic program, the Medicare Prescription Drug Plan, which expanded on LBJ's Medicare program. Uh, but this, this, the, the Joe McCarthy was right went to the second pillar uh, that Richard talked about, which is anti-communism. And uh, you know, communism, except in China, has gone away. Now the communist regime in China is our good friend, and major American corporations, in fact, our leading defense contractors, now are quite literally business partners with the communists in Beijing, with the blessing of the Republican Party. But essentially, the Cold War is over, and we have a new foreign policy struggle. It's not defined by communism, and that's had a lot of uh, ramifications for the conservative movement. Then, the, but there's a third pillar that Richard mentioned, which wasn't as relevant in the 1950s because America wasn't as corrupt a country in the 1950s as it is today. And those are the social and cultural issues. I wrote my 